Gene and Roy here again, busting some more FUD myths. You know, Roy was telling me about some questions he was getting on the internet, and telling me all about that. One question we saw was, what was the best way to zero your pistol optic? We were laughing because it was just so easy. You use a ladder. You all learn more about that. Head on over to brownells.com. All right. Tell your mom I said hi. Hey, Wizards, welcome back. As you can tell, we're doing something a little bit different. And as we near the end of 2023, I kind of want to go over some of my favorite products that we looked at this year. Well, some of these I haven't actually reviewed yet, nor are all of them actually from this year. So let's just say it's my favorite things as of 2023, I guess. We'll just do it that way. Um, the first people I want to thank for all of this is actually all of you. I don't know how many of you know this, but actually as of September of this year, I actually embarked on doing YouTube full time. Also, big thanks to my previous employer who I, I guess helped motivate me to do something more with my life. But it was really thanks to all of you watching our content and supporting us that made all this possible. And it's really amazing to be able to connect to all of you in such an amazing way. Today though, I'll go over some categories I just kind of randomly picked out. I'll mention my favorite in that category and then kind of an honorable mention in that also. I'll also put a link down in the description to all the items as we talk about them along the way with discount codes and all that kind of stuff at the bottom. That way, if you want any of this stuff, you have access to it and click on all the links and all that. All right, though, let's get to the shilling. That's just a joke. I also can't wait for the epic butt hurt that's gonna be the staccato versus the bull video. But let's just go into the categories. The first one we're gonna do is uh, my favorite battle belt because it's kind of my jam. And the main one that's my favorite is absolutely the, not that one, the DM mech belt. I love how easy it is to set up this belt with the one wrap and using the integrated molly slots, it makes for a smart way to use the overall belt structure to hold your pouches and equipment. It's just a great belt with like a smart Tegra system and a dual attachment point. It's, it's everything you'd want in a battle belt. Whatever happened to that horrible BFG one with like the helicopter attachment points? God, it was bad. Ah, uh, the CHLK, I, I think they made a new version, like the grid that didn't have the helicopter attachment points I was supposed to approve on it a whole bunch. But interestingly, <laughs> no one cares. That The CHLK though, like, I don't know if I really talked about this, but the actual Velcro that was on that, it, it didn't even last that entire review. So yeah, I don't recommend that belt at all. I think I've said that many times. So honorable mention in our battle belt category though, it does go to the HRT arc belt. If I don't hit myself with it. The arc belt provides the same Tegris core and ability to integrate into the center structure to give you a super lightweight belt that does everything better than the previous generations. Again, too, we have discount codes and all that down with the links and everything else to all this stuff. So if you're looking for all that, it's down in the description to follow the links. All right, what's next? Okay, favorite mid-range optic. And this is gonna come as a surprise because it's a little bit lesser known optic, but it's actually gonna be the ZeroTech Trace Advance 3 to 18. This thing is nuts. The ZeroTech 3 to 18 was just superb from the glass to the eye box to the reticle, giving me a scope that could push far beyond other competitors in the same weight class. Like I said, it is just dumb good if you're looking for a high quality optic. Uh, honorable mention though, and I really should do a clash video of these two, but someone stole this from me, is the actual primary arms 2.5 to 10 Griffin. With its easy to use eye box and multi-caliber weapon system reticle, the GLX Griffin is just a standout champ in terms of scope choices. And unfortunately the two and a half to 10 is always sold out, but man, is it good. I did let Jason steal it and he just loves it. So it is a fantastic optic. All right, what's next looks like best rifle. Well, I'm skipping this because I build almost all my own arrow stuff, but they refuse to do anything left-handed. So I'm kind of shunning them. Plus, between you and me, they tend to be just a little bit pinky out. But honorable mention to that badass uh, bullpup chassis that MK Machining is working on. I'm really excited to try this out and transform our Tika TAC A1 into something wildly different. They've got something pretty crazy going on here. And yeah, I realize that's arguably not a rifle, but I am excited to punch myself in the head like Hop and Brassfax when I tell you all that I don't like bullpups. 
Oh, okay, this is a fun one. Um, kind of annoying though, because I haven't shown you all of this. Most innovative, and this goes to the Garmin Zero, X-E-R-O, C1 con chronograph. Instead of lugging around some huge dinner plate, you have this tiny device that easily fits in a bag and can capture the speed of bows, air guns, and full-size rifles. Now, I've done very little testing with it, but it's just blown me away so far. I will warn you, it is stupid expensive, and eh, yeah, it's just about impossible to find, too. I honestly have no idea how I found this on Cabela's website. Maybe it's Bass Pro or something. <laughs> Whoever sold me this, I don't think they were supposed to do that. An honorable mention, where is it? Oh, here we go. Goes over to our friends over at Guardian Warrior Solutions for the very awesome bang hanger. The bang hanger gives a bit of a middle finger to the literal bars of metal and instead gives you this super comfortable solution to not only connect in, but also customize your pistol mounting. It's just done really well and I don't feel bad at all about spoiling the launch of such a fantastic product. Now, Shaw, I know you're out there and your leg strap looks super awesome. I just haven't got to try it out. I am gonna order one though. Okay, uh, what else do we have? Oh, favorite pistol. This is absolutely the Bull SAS2 TAC four and a quarter. The TAC has this super lightweight frame that synergizes into an incredibly fast and accurate package, giving me a pistol that I just instantly clicked with and was able to make rapid shots on target. And it's just crazy because it's one of those pistols that makes me look like a better shooter than maybe I actually am. Honorable mention though goes to a pistol that hasn't had a lot of screen time, but I've done a lot of off-camera training with, and that's the SIG X Macro. I usually hate small snappy pistols, and I love how tame and simple to shoot this guy is. With the 17 round magazine and optics cut, this defines the new standard of a CCW weapon system. Love, love, love shooting this thing, and I'm honestly pretty surprised as I say, I kind of jokingly say that I can almost shoot this as well as I can like the Staccato P. Oh, hey everyone. I wanted to jump in and make sure to talk about the videos that Walsh got the most wrong this year, and it's definitely the antimatter scope switch. He didn't even move his hand during the review, which is like 0.13 seconds faster, as you can tell from the comments. He, he didn't even bother testing this product at all. Why is he shooting? What does that have to do with anything? I've already calculated out the faster speed. The other one he definitely got wrong was the ATN thermal video. This is a quality product and no one should be worried about 17 batteries in a two hour period. Look at this zoom. This is what you want in a good hunt. These are actually great products at a premium price. If you need an ego boost, but don't plan to do any shooting. Well, at least he got the last part right. All right, now let's do favorite plate carrier. And this one may surprise you all as it's actually the Javelin Concepts Ajax 2.0. From the slim fit of the carrier to the super innovative front placard, we see some ultra smart things going on here that keep pushing the edge of plate carrier innovation. And if you pay attention, there's a lot of other companies out there that are watching what Javelin Concepts is doing pretty closely too, and for good reason. Okay, for honorable mention though, one of my absolute favorite plate carriers, let's see if I can grab it. That's gonna be, good grief, I've been working out in this thing so it's got everything loaded up. The Defense Mechanisms MEPC 2.0. The updates to the MEPC along with its price point just solidifies it as a top tier pick for someone looking for a, one of the best plate carriers that you could possibly buy. Turn that back down. And it doesn't cost like $700 like a stupid ass strand hog. All right, let's keep this boat moving though. Oh, let's do my favorite LPVO. And this is absolutely the primary arms PLXC 1 to 8 Griffin. The compact size of the PLXC defines what you want in an LPVO, while then giving you one of the best multi caliber and multi barrel length reticles that exists on the market. And I don't know who else would tell you otherwise, but it is just stupid good. And now I'm realizing I'm a bit biased because the honorable mention is the GLX 1 to 6 Griffin reticle from Primary Arms. Using that same amazing reticle, you can save a ton of money with the GLX version and still have amazing turrets and great build quality to give you another just insane setup. I will say though, that if you're not gonna get a compact LPVO, that I would probably go with a mid-range optic instead, but everyone on Reddit seems to know better than me, so <laughs> who cares? Okay, I'm super excited about this one. This was the most fun to review category, 
And the video that I just absolutely loved was the one you guys just recently had, and that's the four versus four hundred dollar thermal blanket video. Testing that metallic fart sack and showing how insanely stupid it was was just incredibly fun. From the drone testing to the video footage, it was a laugh fest and just how bad it was. And it made me so happy. Like, like it made it made my heart happy that such a horrible idea performed so poorly. No. As we tested, it's not a good idea to use a mylar blanket for anything besides preventing hypothermia. Honorable mention for the most fun video is definitely the antimatter scope switch video. With all the mushroom pumping jokes and testing of this device, I had a great time exploring what works and well, I don't know, mostly what doesn't, but it was fun to see and to try out from beginning to end. And we're also living rent free in the head of the owner, so that's fun too. All right, next category is, oh, you girls are gonna get mad about this one. Best pistol optic, and I'm trying to see if I have one sitting over here, oh, I do. This is gonna be the Holosun 507, no, this is not it, this is it. This is the Holosun 507C and 509 with the ACSS Vulcan reticle. I really found the Vulcan reticle was amazing in helping you guide to center, giving you a distinct advantage in realistic scenarios. The reticle is also great on a top mount to help you easily find the dot. And having that circle really cuts out a lot of training time if you're using it as a top dot, particularly when you have it so high that your chin isn't even on the buttstock at all. Also, if you're doing that, stop. Now, honorable mention is, and you're gonna be surprised because I don't actually like the grandma mailbox acro design. Instead, I picked out the Holosun EPS and EPS carry line. Yes, I'm not confused. Those ones I actually liked a whole lot. The EPS and the EPS carry offer a great enclosed optic to add to your concealed carry or smaller frame firearms, giving you significantly more accuracy and threat focus when you need it. And I don't know why we need to have this conversation, but no, your full-size pistol doesn't need like a full bread loaf on the top to use as an optic. And the Steiner one, God, it sucks. But here we are, I'm just ranting here at the end of the video. Uh, oh, okay, this is the last category, and this is gonna be the best pistol and rifle pouches. This one goes to some really great people that I'm pretty happy to be tipping my hat to for all the great work that they've done, and this is gonna be for the Grim Hunter Tactical Rapid Mag Pouches. With the combination of elastic and hard backing, you have one of the first elastic mag pouches that has good retention, along with simple re-indexing, allowing it also to collapse down when it's not in use. And they are a small shop, so please, please, please have some patience with them if you end up wanting some of the best elastic mag pouches that exist on the market. Now though, I have one of these over here somewhere. Uh, honorable mention goes to the HRT ARC pouches. Switching gears, the ARC pouches improve on the hard S-Tac style design to give you some of the best mag retention, mounting options, and re-indexing of any of this style on the market. But I think that's it. My current favorites and a sneak peek at some things that I, I don't know, I just haven't got a chance to show you yet. But you are the ones who made this an absolutely amazing year for the TLD team, for my family, and for myself. I just can't believe the love that you show for all of us, and I'm really excited to show you all the cool stuff that we have planned as we go into 2024. So definitely stay tuned, uh, and also stay tuned for the end of our survival story, and as we move into chapter two, I think you guys are all gonna love it. Again, thank you. Thanks to all of our YouTube members. Thanks to all of our Patreon supporters. Thanks to everyone that likes, comments, and subscribes. Thanks to anyone who just comes in and watches our videos or has no idea who I am and sees me for the first time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I really hope your year is filled with blessings and I wish you all the best and I hope we can all go through it together. All right, everybody, wash out. Let's assume there's a flight path and my backyard is where all the flight paths have to cross over because we have more airplanes. It's directly overhead. Welcome, welcome to our show. Oh, the hardest ones to review. Okay, hardest one to review I will say was probably the Shaw Arc V2 because it's complicated, 
it's modular, and it's expensive. That's not what made it so hard, though. What made it so hard is that it's really, really, really good. So it's very hard to take something that's that good, but then also that expensive, and then recommend it to you guys. Like, like ranking that was super hard. It was hard to show you all the different features of it, but then also kind of say like, yeah, it costs a bajillion dollars, but it is phenomenal. But balancing all those made that one really hard to review. Uh, honorable mention, I had to think about it. Honorable mention goes to the antimatter scope switch for one of the hardest things to review. And that's because you have this, you have this bulky, complicated, and expensive thing that shaves off like 0.15 seconds. So it, it's really hard to show how much like drama that really adds to everything in a video. Like I had to kind of go to a lot of lengths to show that in a multiple, multiple different ways, like you know, different you know, stances and sitting and prone and all kinds of different stuff, just to show you how complicated it got and kind of like, what are you gaining from spending all this money? So yeah, that's probably the hardest ones. Just, it, was just, it was just very difficult to like think through how to capture that all for you. All right, I'm sure I'll put some more bloopers in here, probably complaining about airplanes. So yeah, you guys have a great one, for real. Okay, no, seriously, go away. <laughs> I gotta clean all this stuff up. 